been a military brat all my life. However, I've been in the industry of aviation for the last 21 years. And I became an FE somewhere around 15 or 16 when I really started looking at conspiracies. Uh, I looked into Benghazi because I happened to work on government contracts abroad, overseas. But I've been in aviation for 21 years. Anything from helicopters to aerostats to big birds, little birds, fighter jets, things with engines, no engines, big blades, little blades, compressor blades, which, by the way, that one's not a hoax. Jets do not run only on compressed air. Contrary to popular belief, it takes compressed air in a blended ratio of air to fuel to drive the now heated gas and rotate the compressor blades. This has been a topic of a discussion between FE and, you know, not everything's a hoax. Coriolis effect, with that ties into, obviously with no spin, around the access points that they say exist at 23.4 conveniently, 66 off the, the 90 degrees, right? Everything ties into 666 with NASA and all the BS scientists. Our aircraft have things called ADIs, Attitude Direction Indicator, which gives correlation between the aircraft housing or the shell around the gyro itself. The ADI is nothing more than a gyro that will always reference level. I don't care what any pilot says. I don't care what any mechanic tells you. You know, there's a reason that pilots have one book called a pilot operating handbook. And there's every other book, right? From structures to avionics to wiring diagrams to the actual components that make up these systems. That is a standalone system. The ADI does not lie. You don't care how cold it is, how high you are, and some of these guys are pretty damn high. It doesn't matter where you're going. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter where you are over the realm itself. As far as ADIs in every aircraft, it references the level horizon or references sea level always. There's no way that you can convince somebody of sound mind that if you take off from New York and immediately flip upside down, now your housing or your ADI is referencing upside down to you because you're upside down. It's right side up. It cannot deviate off level. It doesn't matter how much fuel you got in your tanks. It doesn't matter if you're a helicopter or an aerostat or a fighter jet. That gauge will always reference level. It has to, because otherwise it would be a poor reference. And if you could manipulate it, why would you even have it in the airplane or your aircraft? But if you go and take off two miles away, do a barrel roll, you're now flying upside down. At what point does that gauge show you back right side up? A half a hemisphere away? Is that what, is that what we're led to believe? Is that what we're supposed to believe? At what point does it, does it right itself? If you never flipped back over, and continue flying level. You, know, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ludicrous to think that that thing compensates for curvature in straight and level flight. Interesting side note, I worked on aerostats for several years and I always ask people who try to bring up gravity, well, how come my 4,000 pound, 74,000 cubic foot aerostat isn't getting pushed towards ground? It weighs more than you do, which you believe gravity is pushing you down, right? Because these are some dense ass people. But how come the aerostat's not getting driven into the ground? It weighs more. It's definitely larger than a, you know, the size of a house. It's more than most size of most houses. You know, so why isn't it getting driven to the ground? Well, that's because it's displacing less weight than the atmosphere or the medium that it's in. And I try explaining that. I don't know how many times you've probably posted something on this. I don't know how many times we're gonna have to post something on this. But every time that little kid lets go of that helium balloon, it starts crying. But truth be told, I've been to many countries, done many things, all things aviation. I can say with absolute certainty, and I can attest, the plane does not dip nose down to follow the curvature of the Earth, ever. Matter of fact, most planes have an airfoil that are three degrees nose up in straight and level flight. And the reason that is, is simple. If the nose of the aircraft was at zero degrees or level flying through the air, then it would porpoise, right? It would be kind of violent because some of the air would go over the nose and some of the air would go under the nose and it would cause that nose to go up and down, up and down, which is literally like a porpoise or a dolphin out of water. And that's exactly what would happen. So it's, the wings are designed 
when they are level, the nose is three degrees nose up. The fact three-dimensionally. It is two-dimensional. It is the amount of deviation that's required for you to come back inward. If you are walking east from north, meaning you are going around north equidistantly, and you walked in a straight line east one mile, you're going to have to deviate eight inches back to the left to, to get back on the equator, right? Look at it on the flat earth map, and clearly it makes sense. If you walked one mile in a straight line east, you have to deviate eight inches after each mile to stay on the equator. The eight inches per mile squared is a real measurement. If in fact we consider the equator to be a real place, a real location, ever, always.